Hello uh, and welcome. Um, we've got a really wonderful Wednesday webinar for you this evening with one of the uh, rising stars of the Green uh, Movement. Um, we're very honoured to have uh, Sean Berry here, who's a long-term campaigner for the useful use of community space. Um, Sean's done an absolutely amazing Dead Spaces report um, and has been running uh, round tables about the reuse of uh, so many of the dead spaces we can see in our community. So, uh, um, welcome, Sean. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, over to you. Thank you so much. Amazing. Thank you so much. What an amazing group of people to have in the room as well. Um, this is very exciting. Um, I'll explain why, because this is my mission in, in this area of policy at the moment is to connect people up together because I just think there are so many different ideas out there. I mean, you've said repair cafes and the climate emergency centres are absolutely marvellous and, you know, all kinds of community enterprises. There's a, there's the youth project, I think Junior mentioned, you know, there's, there's so many things that are crying out for space and also so many spaces that are crying out for useful things to happen in them. And almost everybody agrees that, that, that this ought to be sorted out. Um, and like some of you have, sort of indicated there's there's a few weird stupid legal barriers in the way there's a few practical issues and I you know I first met Phoenix I don't know when it was but you were you were occupying the St George's Chapel down the road from me and that's when I first met you I don't even know was that 2006 or something it's a long time ago yeah yeah about that yeah yeah so this kind of common sense, let's make the best use of all our spaces, really permeates a lot of my work. Um, and then obviously within my work currently on the London Assembly, I'm in London today, I'm often in Brighton, and hopefully I'll be down there tomorrow um, if I don't test positive for COVID, because <laughs> I'm feeling a bit terrible and some of my colleagues have got COVID and I'm a little worried about that. Um, but I'm sort of splitting my time at the moment. My work in the London Assembly carries on. And within my work there, I've been sitting on the Planning and Regeneration Committee since the last election, but also on the Housing Committee. And all these issues about how we use space are all linked up together. The work I've done within housing is often um, solved by, by processes like I'm going to talk about, but at the moment is dominated by councils who want to act like big developers or literally get into bed with big developers, have their eye on a whole estate and want to knock it down and if you when you go and talk to the residents who are worried about having their homes demolished they're full of ideas for how that estate could be improved how the the dead spaces within the estate maybe the garages or the the undercroft if you know what that is like the other bit they're often full of ideas for how to use those spaces better and there's absolutely no one within the council tasked with or within London um through the mayor there's no one tasked with helping to bring those ideas to life. And I, and I keep putting amendments into the GLA budget for really paltry amounts that they could easily spare, like one million pounds, um, which isn't a lot. We've got a 20 billion pound budget in the, in the GLA. Um, so that that can, can be given out in grants, just you know, tiny amounts to groups who want to further develop ideas or, or get something off the ground that's an idea like this. Um, and we call it things like Resident Empowerment Fund. And they always vote it down. And unlike some of my previous ideas, like funding youth services, they still haven't taken it up as their own idea a year later and claimed it and done it. And it's just, I think there's a, there's a genuine attitude that, that bottom up is not better um, from a lot of other politicians. And for, for me and those of you who are members of the party, and I suspect there's a few of you, but definitely Shane, Bottom up is is really in our party's DNA, and I really um, want to try and help more things to happen. So um, I'll tell you a little bit about first of all the dead spaces work that I've been doing within London, but that's just a a part of a bigger, a big, a better, bigger idea called the People's Land Commission. So I try to split my time sensibly. And look, it's already twenty past. How long do you want me to speak for? <laughs> You, yeah, I mean, you you had up to half an hour, but you, you didn't want to do a full set, so, you know, just chat for 20 minutes on... on I'll one, do 10 two. on each. Let me see if I can... Oh, manage. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Yep, Brilliant. Yep. So I've got some links already to send to you because I haven't prepared slides, but I think everyone wants to have the links anyway, so it's just much better if I just talk. So this is a link to my Dead Spaces report, and this was done in 2022, and it's quite a limited piece of work in lots of ways. Um, it comes out of the 2021 um, election work that we did. So after the 2021 London elections, we had policies for this kind of thing in our manifesto. 
Um, but we didn't really know the extent of it. So after that election, we um, talked to people about what we should be working on in the assembly, because we do we bring people together like this and say, what ideas do you have? And a really key thing that came out of the discussion, and this was the you know, middle of 2021, was people had really noticed that there are within their communities what they, the name comes from them, what they call dead spaces. And so I wanted to try and sort of illustrate what was going on. So I FOI'd, me and my team, I should say, I don't do all this work myself, me and my team FOI'd um, all the councils in London and asked them what kinds of spaces they had that were not in their usual use, that were empty or out of use. And we asked, you know, for as full details if possible names and addresses um the floor space the, the the usual use any different current use and what their plans were for it and so we we produced this report um and we got back an extra it was really hard to know <clears throat> pardon me it was really hard to know how to illustrate this because we just got back an enormous range if you see this and you'll see it in the report there's a gigantic range of different uses and buildings and all of them you can you can sort of read through it and be, be inspired of your own accord as to what could be used I mean we've got um, this was in 2022 when we did the work um, you know 18 community centres five community halls three pubs five schools um, 14 public toilets I think they've got those back as toilets to be honest um, five health centres five day centres um, residential lodges adult education centres you know all of these spaces should be given to people like you to do amazing things with, um, even if that's just in the meantime, even if they've got plans to move a new service into the space eventually, they should be bringing these, these things back into life. Um, in total, um, this is just the London boroughs, um, and not all of them answered, because that's what happens when you do an FOI. Um, we, we estimated that if the average across all the councils who did reply was repeated across all of London, there'd be nearly 800 of these spaces and when these you know they're not small spaces we're not we didn't ask about individual homes we're talking we were talking about retail units shop units industrial units big big things so the reason we wanted to do that is so that we could show people the potential that there was and show people like you um within london that that there were spaces crying out for their space and and we had an incredible reaction to it so many people got in touch and said oh, what's there in Barnet? <laughs> what did Camden say there was spare? Um, you know, Phoenix included, I think. Um, and so we did our best to sort of pass on the information. Some of the councils, I think Hackney wouldn't tell us any details whatsoever because of security. So they don't want squatters going in, but then they're quite happy to leave things um, completely empty, um, which is you know a bit of a disgrace. But we did our best to pass on the information we had from the councils that they released to us to everybody who might need it. Gave them you know our backing to go and talk to the council. Um, but we really felt like we could do more. And obviously the work that we'd done researching the issue, and we were looking right around the whole country to see what kind of solutions there were. We'd found people like, um, for example, power to change. And I'm just going to do some some appallingly slow copying of links into the zoom chat so power to change um are a lottery funded fund that, that gives out money to groups and uh projects who want to do stuff now and so I've, yeah, I've been very very into this service this area of work for a while i was not aware of this until we started properly doing the research so we found these people and we thought you know what you know what people like you need to hear from people like that and it would be great just to get everyone together. So we've held two now webinars like this and we do it on a sort of participatory basis. We get some speakers from different areas of work, you know, people doing uh, community shops, people doing arts and get them to talk and then bring everybody into a, a space together, a breakout room to have a chat. Um, and that's been amazing. <laughs> it's been really good because it's, it's helped to network people and more people have come out of the 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 woodwork as a result so the last one we did which was quite recent it was in august um featured these people who again i hadn't been aware of up till then um they're called Hello. ace Dog, which is a terrible name um mm -hmm. but essentially what they do is that there's a kind of business oh can someone mute please who's that because otherwise uh, i mute most people i'm just muting one other carry Brilliant. on 
Um, so, so what they've sort of sussed out is that there's actually a, a, bids, a business benefit to someone who's got an office or a, or a retail space on which, which is empty, um, where they can get relief on business rates if a charity runs it. And they've set up essentially an umbrella charity so they can bring in groups who are more grassroots to use the spaces. And they have managed to, they've got a brilliant slide that they showed us. This guy, Shailesh Patel, is in charge of it, um, where he said, look, if you're, if you're paying full business rates, it's this much. If we help you get the relief, that, that means you're paying this much in business rates, we want half your savings back to help fund the projects, which is totally reasonable and totally and, and completely working. He's got so many businesses who are agreeing to do this, um, which is so exciting. Um, the next step we're gonna do is, from, from following on from that last um, webinar we held is, Webinars are great because they're easy to organise. Um, I just need a couple of staff members. I can. I don't need to book a room. It's all very great. But we really felt like everybody should get together in person. And he has a space near Liverpool Street Station, which is a big office that isn't quite... He's only got it for three months or something like that. These are all relatively short-term things that he gets off the, the businesses. But um, he's got it from September to December. So he's decided that is for charities and groups to hold their Christmas parties <laughs> so we're going to have a party there basically where we're going to invite people which is no use to you in London but it and if you're not in London but I think it does illustrate the extent to which all of us involved in this space just need to keep talking to each other um because a thousand flowers can bloom we can all support each other and I just yeah I love the work that Phoenix does um I'm really keen to hear from anybody who's got a really good project that's within reach of me either in London or within reach of Brighton, which are the two places where I spend most of my physical time. Because I, what I've been enjoying doing is also visiting people who are getting these kinds of things off the ground um, and publicising that and then republicising the ideas and the people who can help. Um, again, it's all about the networking. We, we visited an incredible group of people in Cross Harbour, which is just below Canary Wharf. There are some sort of funny little 1980s office blocks there and a group um from that comes directly from the local community there um called the utilize project with the z um started off with one shop unit they you know they just borrowed it off the, the landlords and now they've got like a hundred units i mean that, and that's in two years that's the kind of growth that we can see if we really get it going um sorry sean that's not exactly accurate but i'm gonna okay. leave that there sorry oh oh not accurate as in they don't have 200 units or no as in they actually stole that project from me but um, oh, okay. I'll leave that there. in no that case i will love to have a chat with you can i come and visit your project um but yeah i mean however however things come about there's still positive outcomes i believe let's not get into a wrap. um the other thing that um shailesh has doing is has been doing is he's worked out that um instead of um hang on a second instead of giving things opening up things to to charities to do work um a lot of businesses are doing something really dodgy called box shifting now this is slightly complicated but the relief that you can get on business rates um for, for charities is one thing, you can also get temporary relief on business rates in the three months after your unit goes empty if you're if the business moves out and you're a landlord. And there are landlords out there who are shifting in some boxes, claiming a business is based there for a short period, moving the boxes out and claiming the empty relief for three months again. And this is obviously a loophole um, and can be closed. And if you think about that, I mean, I you know, I'm keen on the relief for charities. I'm not keen on the relief for people being dodgy. Um, so it's not so much about restoring business rights, income to councils, although it would probably help in some cases. It's more about leaving those landlords who are desperate to save on business rates. The only option being the ethical option. <laughs> so that I think would open up loads of possibilities. So that is the link I've just put in is a government consultation on business rates avoidance and tax evasion. And there is an excellent page that's uh, from the, the band Box Shifting campaign, which Shay Lash has set up. Um, there you go, that it explains. And I think that consultation really needs to hear from groups like yours to say, this is a complete waste when there are people like me queuing up to get these spaces and please close this loophole. 
And I think the government will do it because they want the business rates as well. They'll get some more, but also closing the loophole will definitely help all of you. So that's that. That was 10 minutes. Excellent. Yeah. Um, <laughs> keen to... just, to, just to pop in there, that was that came out of your last excellent Dead Spaces roundtable when I asked Shailesh if there's one thing we could do to change the system or change policy so that more community groups can get vacant property, what would it be? And he said, it's this box shifting. He said, it's this. Yeah, exactly. and he said if, if they're not giving it to the box shifting groups, they'll have to give it to community groups to save the rates. So that's the aim behind the campaign, I think. Yeah. Over. Thanks. Or leave, or leave their places empty and pay the, the non-reliefed business rates. But that's good because we'll get business rates then and we can spend it on buses <laughs> and stuff <laughs> that we normally spend business rates on. Um, so, yeah, we, it's a win-win. And I think it's the sort of thing, it's D-luck, I think. I'm not sure who's actually consultation it is, but there are the odd, there is the odd sensible um, sort of junior minister out there who might might recognise this, this issue. So... That's my work on Dead Spaces. And um, like I say, I'm really keen to just keep linking people up together using whatever influence I have, but you're also perfectly capable of linking yourselves up as this webinar shows. Um, so the other thing I I wanted to talk about was this wider, wider idea of having a people's land commission in every area, um, because this, I think, has just got so many further benefits than just trying to plan for better uses for empty space um and it's something i've been pitching to the mayor of london for a little while and it's something that's in my manifestos but actually it comes from um people like stephen hill who you might know who's a uh, an architect very much about community-led planning for social housing and um, also cooperative housing and co-housing he's really really excellent uh, man um, and he worked with Darren Johnson, who was my predecessor on the Assembly after 2016, on a report that was called Where Can We Build More Homes? And coming from that question, the answer they both landed on was we need a people's land commission. We can't just have people sitting around looking at our areas of our, of our cities and our towns and planning them out top down literally top down by looking down on everywhere as if it's a map um and not realizing what potential there is for growth in in the area and, and creative uses um and we have to be involved in communities in planning better but not just planning as in what you're doing isn't planning it's just taking it's just just making use of space it's it's i'm trying to make an ecological metaphor here but basically yeah, it's rewilding of planning um in a really sort of um sort of holistic way um so that report is is absolutely fantastic i'll try and get the link in a moment off that um it's also the reason they landed on this idea was partly also because um of a project in philadelphia which has, has run into some problems but philadelphia was a um, is, a, is a rust belt, which they call, you know, a post-industrial place in, in USA, um, where they the local people ran a, a campaign called Take Back Vacant Land and did that really quite nice thing they have in American democracy, where you put something into the, the election, an extra, an extra ballot paper into the election of should we have a People's Land Commission and set up a People's Land Bank. And that passed in, I think, 2014. And they did set up a People's Land Commission. People... Um, mapped out the, the vacant lots they uh earmarked places that the the state the city should build should buy the city then bought with this land bank the city then bought spaces and then it was sort of supposed to be going out to the to the local community um you know things like that are always a little bit messy um but but genuinely was a, a really good effort at, at bottom-up planning um and i genuinely think that things like community right to buy which they have in scotland now whereas in the rest of the UK, we have, I'm sure they've got in Wales, actually. I don't want to do Wales, Dan. They might have done this already. Um, but in England, certainly, you have community right to bid on things that you've already designated as valuable assets. You know, it's, it's not quite there, is it? We want dead spaces to be able to be um, earmarked for community purchase at a reasonable price. And that gives lots of bigger and more exciting and permanent projects the opportunity to, to take control of land. Um, so so mapping this this issue would be a first step towards really, like I did with the dead space, is really um, campaigning for that that change in, in, in England. And then the other thing it's inspired by is 
Um, I don't know how many of you are um, over 45 because you'd have to be to remember this. But um, when I was a kid, there was a project run by the BBC um, called the Doomsday Project. And Doomsday as in Doomsday Book. <laughs> and um, it was the, God, it was, so it was, it was 1086, I think they did it. So it was 1986. Um, and in my, and they did this project in the run up to that anniversary. And they had this great idea that they'd get children all around the country to work with their schools and they also want, want community groups to take on a square of the country and do this mapping and think about the future um, and it all felt it was lovely the actual process was great because I took part in this and it's genuinely affected my outlook on life for the rest of my life however at the end of the day, all we were allowed to do was put something like a hundred words and a and a map and a few photographs onto two laser discs, which are now only playable on one machine that's in the Bletchley Park Museum of Computing. <laughs> but the spirit of the thing was so good. And 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 the thing I've pitched to the Mayor of London is, you know, you've got loads of ways in which this could help with planning policy. We've got targets for using small sites better to provide homes and community spaces in London. There are councils themselves are supposed to be identifying small sites and they're doing that in a bit of a top down way. And I'd rather have a London wide way of, of doing that. Um, I'd also like to, you know, not have people who've got objections to planning to always be like NIMBYs and preventing things that are being proposed. I'd like people to be able to be empowered to propose things and this would absolutely help with that. Um, but outside of policy, you know, just bringing together and, I, and I'd like to do this through schools. And part of the reason is that often when you start to do a project like this, say you said, oh, who wants to get involved? I think you all would. That's good. Um, I think a lot of people who are already part of conservation areas and people who do spend a lot of time resisting um, would get involved in this um, and I you know I'm not there are a lot of people who do a lot of good work in community sort of existing planning engagement people who set up um, neighborhood forums for example and, make, and write really long neighborhood plans and go through all that stuff but it's a particular kind of person and the thing about the doomsday project was if your school was doing it you did it and, and, and everyone has everyone who has children is linked to a school and so therefore we're reaching the entire community and also hopefully having an influence on those children's outlook on life as well um and you could use it to 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 map your biodiverse areas and try to make sure that in a very local area people were aware that there was a um a biodiverse area here one here and actually this road ought to be greened or pedestrianized or turned into a, a uh, an ecological corridor you know there's all sorts of other things that you could do with this um so I've pitched that to the mayor and suggested that that, that the, the London level is a good way to provide the kind of new technology platform that won't be extinct in about a year and a half um to, to maybe you know help empower people to do this and put some education money in he does already does something called the London curriculum a lot of it's about history he's done some good work um, sort of decolonizing that curriculum which is quite good but you know it's, it's materials for schools and just a little bit more of investment could be a genuinely inspiring project for schools so that's what I'd like to see the mayor do in London but you can totally see how on a on a on a city basis it uh, and a, or a smaller town basis this this could be done so much um more easily um, on the kinds of platforms that a, you know, a group like yours could provide. And it wouldn't be you know, for posterity forever, but it would nevertheless provide a, a real impetus for that. Um, schools in an area could get together and do their own. And, and, and I just think that would be really, really good. So that's my pitch for a, a People's Land Commission. Um, and I, you know, I'd love to see it backed up like it was in Philadelphia with a People's Land Bank. And you know, genuine investment from a, a, a forward-thinking government that then devolves that money for local areas to devolve to the groups to genuinely do community purchase. You know, we, we could, but the start is knowing what's there. That's that's where I started with the dead spaces. Let's let's not just sort of talk anecdotally about the fact that high streets are empty because when we, when I asked the councils what spaces they had, yes, high street shops were some of it. The, the councils do own quite a lot of shops, but there was so much more hidden. In, in the other parts of the, the areas that we uncovered. And, and this is the kind of thing a People's Land Commission would do. And that's my other 10 minutes. Hey. I can't believe I did that. I'm feeling so ill, you've no idea.
Oh, thank you so much. Well done for uh, summoning it up and uh, giving it out, as always. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, you know, what we want is common sense, really, here. And that was really exciting to hear about what they've done with the People's um, Land Commission and, and Land Bank over over in the States thing. Was brilliant. You know, we, we really need that. You know, I think there's something who really owns Britain and the land distribution is terrible in this country. Uh, um, so questions, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to uh, raise your hands and reactions tab you can do it traditionally by waving your hand but it's easier uh facilitating if you use the uh, reactions down the bottom and then uh put your hand up like that and then we can see who wants to ask a question one two and three any any questions about that to show um i'm just going to check my leftover links in so that's the where can we build new homes link which may or looks a bit broken um strangely let me see if i can improve that um so I suppose back on, on question while I was thinking on the on the land commission, mm. what sort of feedback did you get from the mayor's office? Because I remember going down to the GLA a few years ago trying to work out how it worked, but there was mayors yeah. and mayors and you have to you know deputy mayors have a, a it's a mayoral system they have a lot of the power. Um, was there yeah. any movement from them about something that could happen, or how did they feel about it? He was intrigued by the idea when I, so I did my, I did that little pitch that I just did to you um, at Mayor's Question Time where I get six minutes. So I did a really short version of that pitch and went, shouldn't you talk to me more about this? And I got a meeting and it was good. Like the mayor met, I very, this probably only had three meetings with the mayor, the mayor, the, you know, me and him both actually talking to each other, not on Mayor's Question Time since I was elected. And he was very interested, but then what he did was, he passed me on to the planning team. And when I spoke to the planning team, all they could think about was planning. And so I've tried to go to the, we've got someone, you'll, you might know Theo Blackwell because we've been trying to get, we, we spent time trying to get stuff out of him in Camden. He was, so Theo Blackwell was the Camden finance chief. He was the finance chief who said no to the mothership being used and then they gave it to exactly. property planning. Yeah, That's exactly right. The GLA, yeah. Now at the GLA, he is um, our sort of technology czar. I can't remember what his actual title is, chief technology officer or something like that. Um, and he is in charge of, sort of linking up tech and doing various things around policy, but also because he's quite into open data. It's one of his actual virtues is he's quite into open data and he is overseeing a project where <clears throat> the GLA is getting a better grip of its own data for planning. So there's the beginnings of, of a database there, like where things are actually data and not just maps or images or text, you know, actual data, GIS information. Um, there's the beginnings of that. And if you had that, that could be the beginnings of this project. Um, so I've been trying to get him interested as well. But really, it's not, yeah, it's not progressing particularly well. It's all in different deputy mayor's remits. Mm -hmm. Debbie Wicks Bernard, who's the community participation, and, and she, she'd she be a really good person to talk about that. The education team are separate as well. That's why I went to the mayor, but he isn't, he isn't taking the lead and linking it all up. He has his mm -hmm. own issues to worry about. Okay. I, I should have been mad. I mean, you know, that's all, but... Um, yeah. be empty of place, hopefully, with, with all our help. Um, yeah. So potentially a town like Philadelphia, you know, a, a, somewhere could show the way elsewhere in the country in doing this, and then it might, people might get it better. Exactly. Uh, over to Dave from the uh, Occupy Economics Working Group. I think he's got a schools link there as well, Dave. <laughs> Hi, Sean. Um, right. Um, oh, God. Uh, hopefully I'm still visible. Um, yeah, um, I'm kind of very aware that there's a heck of a lot of empty um, property in the UK. Several years ago, Phoenix got me to try and find out how much, and it seems to be anything from 800,000 to, yeah, I don't know, let's guess, you know, half a million, one three quarters, sorry, sorry, one and a half million, one three quarters million. When, I mean, for my since I've been a member of the Labour Party since I was 27, Good luck in Brighton, by the way. Um, but uh, when I go around pushing flyers through doors of a couple of hundred people, there's always about three houses which are obviously have been empty for um, several months. I mean, I'm asking myself what we can do to sort of, you know, utilise um, those empty spaces. And, you know, I'm a baby boomer, so... A fair number of my generation do have uh, 
an extra house, which is appalling. But um, like, say, um, there's issues with, you know, guys my age not being able to sort of get their heads around the housing um, regulations. I mean, my mum lived in um, Dorset, which has got an issue with second homes. Uh, but, um, you know, 12 people own about half of Dorset. And um, if, you know, you could bury half of London in Dorset without anybody noticing, it's like we've got nearly one acre per head uh, of land in the United Kingdom. Also, obviously, we need some kind of capital transfer um, tax to um, stop the sort of inflation of sort of land and property um, prices being a great tax dodge for people who are in, I don't know, the top 15% of the um, asset class in the U UK. I mean, do you see any hope in um, addressing this? Because like I say, there, there, there is not a lack of space. And your friend of mine who is homeless, you know, I mean, they know there's a ton of stuff out there. Um, okay, we probably should build more. We've got the space, but you don't necessarily need to build more if you've got, um, you know, a more efficient system than the what one you've got that got got at the moment. I mean, there seems to be a lot of you know technological incompetence um, here. Not to mention the masses of empty space and empty offices down the Great West Road in Brentford where. I live, which could be repurposed and so on. So, yeah, um, I mean, I've got my opinions to how you to endorse that. I mean, <laughs> how you address that? How would you address it? So, if I understand correctly, this is mainly about housing that you're asking. Um, it's about I... finding places for people to crash, live, stay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I mean, there's there's an awful lot in that about, you know, how people get away with owning vast amounts of wealth and we're not taxing that wealth you know there's those yeah. kinds of issues um but if you're talking about empty homes um <clears throat> and homes that are um there's going to be quite the, so the government has been there's some really common sense things that need to happen and the government has been promising for example more regulation of the private rented sector not rent controls like we'd like but there is a renters reform bill making its way through parliament right. that is very well, it's not quite introduced yet. Anyway, it's 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 kind of delayed, but it contains yeah. some things that, although they're mild and not the full reform that we'd want, they would allow for um, homes left empty to be much more easily acquired, but by local councils. And I'm they're taking quite, their time. Yeah, they are. They've put it off for about two years now. It's it's a whole year since Caroline Lucas put in an EDM to so try and hurry it up, and that was after it was already delayed. So. Yeah, it's it's not brilliant, but again, it, you know, all these things nudge a market that's completely out of control, slightly in the right direction. The the <clears throat> he's, I mean, I think he's already today. The prime minister's already said he might cancel this bit, but the regulations on um, energy efficiency for landlords might prompt some people to to try and sell their homes. And I've been pushing particularly for acquisitions of homes, sort of voluntarily, so not compulsory purchase of someone who's left a home to rot, but um, somebody genuinely wants to, to exit the market and wants to sell their um, their home that they've been rented out because they're not allowed to rent out again after the, the current tenants leave because it's not energy efficient, making it really easy putting funding in so that so that councils can can purchase those homes. Because um, you're right, there is you know, a lot of homes exist and they're in the wrong tenure or they're being double owned by people in ways that, and, and particularly affecting the more um, tourist destinations. So certainly Brighton, Cornwall, um, you know, parts of London are yeah. overrun with people who are renting them out under short term lets. And that's that's really quite damaging. So, yeah, there are there are enough homes, really. A lot of them are in the wrong tenures and pulling a few more directly out of the private rented sector and putting them into social housing could be done with with you know, a good chunk of money and be really good value. And I'll have more to say on that soon. But Neff have just done a really good report on it. New Economics Foundation have done quite a nice report about community right to buy um, that looks at this issue as well. And so there's, a again, a Neff are quite Labour, but they're also quite green. There's a bit of a consensus growing. Whether or not we can get it into the manifestos, I don't know. But if we don't, then soon after the election, we'll be pushing for whatever money can be got 
and whatever changes in direction we can force to, to make that happen. Okay. Um, so if, any other questions, do put your hands up. I'm going to ch chuck one in here while you guys are queuing up for the, the, um, the, the Green Party actually has a policy on vacant reuse of vacant properties, doesn't it? I think you're one of the few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd 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 let a council's compulsory purchase in a we'd really we'd really beef it up and uh community right to buy um of spaces, not just buildings, but you know, green spaces and things like that to protect them and, and build up community assets. it's all part of it's all part of transition, it's all part of, of empowering communities to be more resilient. It's 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 a thread that runs through many, many of our policies. Hmm. Uh, you know, more more the other parties as well need to get behind that and, and support it, and we all do really, along with the ban box shifting. You know, we need we need common sense really uh, to be seen. Uh, Eleanor, Sunny Brixton. Hello from rainy Brixton. <laughs> Very rainy. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> um, hi, Sean. That that was that was great. I'm just having a look at the report. I it mentions a community improvement district. I just wondered if you'd come across them and how they work because it seems a way of sort of well ring fencing a part of a of an area which could be great but people not in that part might not like it so it just kind of sounds very interesting i just wondered if you came across any examples that you could share um, not not really this is one of those good ideas that's, that's that takes a while to sort of get into um fruition i had a really interesting chat this week with the um, chair of the the bid the, the business improvement district which this is kind of modeled on um for brighton and hove um and that is something i'd you know i'd like to, to talk there about because i think that is one of the well it's a really it's a really amazing place i want to be at mp but it's also the kind of place where we might kick something like that off where there's the existing bid structure that where people could to map that on but um it is it is a nice idea for community-led regeneration. I do worry that things like that might might lead to... I mean, this is the same risk that you have with the People's Land Commission. If you name a load of places that you want to be improved, that you're dissatisfied with in your local community, if you're not empowered to then make use of them, if you don't have funding or the legal ability to take control... It's a little bit of a map that Savills might use, sorry, Savills, <laughs> to to put a load of developers in that direction. And it's the kind of thing that worries me a bit. Um, and so, yeah, I'm not I'm not sure. It's that, it sounds promising, but I, I, I'm I'm interested to see more examples of it working. Right. OK, thank you. Have a go, though. Let's see. Let's, let's see if we get one to work. Sure. Um, is there a web link for that, uh, Eleanor or Sean, on the... Uh... So it's not a my reply. the community yeah. improvement district. Find one I'm trying to find the right bit in the in the. Uh... We will be sharing these links in 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 yeah. minutes. In the it program. is mentioned in the report, so there will be a there will be a reference in the report that you can. Right. I mean, some of the conversation we've been having is how do we change the system to accelerate helping community and environmental groups, uh, community groups, all variety, access some of these many dead spaces and buildings that we can see in all of our communities. And it's a no brainer, really, because when you give a community a space, we've seen it over the years, how they kind of create a mothership, for hundreds of other projects and spaces and meetings and groups. We just, a lot of our communities just need the leg up of having that space in the first place. Uh, one of the old jokes, Phoenix's law of space. If you've got space, it will fill up. People yeah come if you get given a building you know um you know just to mention it you know uh jay junior I've, I've i've seen him you know help so many people across you know communities he works with to to get space and to make things happen and you know if we have a big space many of these things can happen you know uh and we need that don't we jay junior <laughs> No, I'm on mute there, but like i would say on that note that phoenix is a major inspiration to me and he's been doing this stuff for so many years that what I'm doing is minuscule to that, but it's about us collaborating together and bringing in that love and that making it available for the community, which I'm all for. So, but big up Phoenix and yeah, credit to you, Sean, as well for the work that you're doing in the political side as well. But yeah, the more we can connect and open this up, I'm sure there's so much more that can be done, like almost like an explosion of spaces, you know? Mm -hmm. I agree. I'd love to come and visit you, your project, Junior. 
<laughs> sorry for if you yeah it's, i understand um, like yeah, the, the people land commission in, in philadelphia was not without its wrangles honestly <laughs> I, I actually learned the business rate stuff from Jay, who clarified it for me, and then I put it in the climate emergency center handbook and put it around lots I'm, of people. So we all mutually. I'm not going to take. I'm not going to take credit for that either, because I actually learned from that model from Shailish Patel, who you yeah. guys are referring to. Um, I won't go into that too much, but Sean, maybe we should speak off the record about a few things. So. Yeah. Okay. okay fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Networking wherever you are. Um, I think, um, and um, I won't say too much, I won't say too much, but yeah. It's being recorded, so let's chat oh. off. Um, if you want to get in touch with me, um, I'm going to put my, my email at the London Assembly, which is the place I'm doing most of this work at the moment, um, in the chat. And then also, if you want me about Green or Brighton stuff, um, it's that for the time being. Well, there's a fantastic couple of buildings oh, in Brighton. In Brighton. Uh, What's it called? The one in Brighton that, that Dev does, the Real Jump Project. Real Junk, real real junk Project. Junk, thanks. Yeah, they recycle they food. Because uh, I go there sometimes. So. Oh, I'm just going to oh, meet you. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll do kind of, yeah. well, we're getting five to eight. So we might just uh, go around the screen for parting comments from about people. We usually keep it fairly tight to the hour. But if you've you know, got something you want to say in the last wheel, should we just go around the screen for checkouts and uh, final comment or anything you want to share. Um, it's five, two. So, uh, Debs. Sorry, Priya. <laughs> Multitasking, sorting children out, sorting dogs out. <laughs> it's really interesting. I'm a bit worried though for like, Green Party in the North because like, we had a meeting and really, really limited people coming. So, yeah, I think they're winding up in Preston, the Green Party, unfortunately. They just can't get any people to sit, like, be treasurer and that, which is really unfortunate because they're needed. <laughs> you need the Green Team. Yeah. Are you with us, Linda? I'm here. Any words of wisdom for passing comment? <laughs> but it was uh, it was good to hear Sean tonight, and uh, we've got a lot of work to get done in the next few months, huh? Mm -hmm. So L Linda works with us on space generators and the climate emergency Center network. Uh, coming down to John. Yeah, no, it was really interesting. Thanks, Sean, for that. That was really interesting. Yeah, I, I think someone just commented just now. We've got to go back to our communities and do the work now, haven't we? Um, in all our communities, so there's a lot to do. But yeah, really interesting because it gives you so many ideas and, like you say, linking linkages in with everyone. Oh, up uh, to Liz. Yeah, thank you, Sean. That was great. Yeah, there's a lot that I'm going to take away from this and a lot I'm going to learn with all your links and things. So thank you. Really inspiring tonight. Brilliant, Sean. Um, Junior? Jay? Sorry, just um, thank you, Sean and Felix, for um, for tonight's really inspiring and education, um, informative as well. And um, that big up to everybody doing the work that they're doing around the country. And one thing that's playing around in my mind is Phil from Carmarthen, with this centre that you're trying to open down there, I'd love to come and visit. Um, there's some really beautiful people in Carmarthen that I'm connected to. Um, so I'd love to come and visit that. So. Uh, cool. So Scott, the Rewild Project. Just the Rewild we met at Glastonbury. Rewild Project. Scott, are you with us? Beaming along. Um, I think Kez is saying goodbye. People start beaming out. So, uh, Chris, you usually can keep it fairly tight to the hour. Chris? Uh, yeah, just to say thank you, everybody, for you know time at this late uh, hour of the evening. And, uh, yeah, interesting. Fingers crossed, right? Let's keep going. <laughs> uh, uh, Nick, in the marches. 
Well, that was an extremely resource-rich uh, session. Thank you so much, Sean. Uh, I feel slightly overwhelmed with how much there is that I want to catch up on after this session. Uh, I'm only sad that there weren't some other people from the group here to tap into this. Uh, because it's a little bit frustrating to know what the potential is with people doing so much good work around the country. And I uh, feel quite confident that we could import some of that here, which we nearly did. As um, as people remember, we very nearly did that back in 2020, but we got uh, foxed by a lockdown. So just trying to regroup and see whether we couldn't uh, make a fresh start with some of this new work that's been done. So thank you very, very much. That was extremely useful. Lovely, Nick. Get in touch. Never give up. It goes in waves. Keep going. We layer up on things and, and, and keep going. You can't kill a spirit. Um, David, lovely to see the Occupy team in the house. Cheers. Hi. Yeah, well, like I said in the um, chat uh, 10 years ago, the chief uh, leader writing in the FT said that um, the whole finance sector was a sort of scam designed to inflate property prices. And basically, they're sort of... Um, you know, bleeding millennials and a heck of a lot of other um, people by high rents or ultra high um, mortgages. We've got a ton of land in this country. Inheritance tax, if you've got an estate, a hell of a lot of land, you don't pay any money on it. So it's a brilliant scam if you're the top point oh oh whatever 1%. Um, and... Uh, it could be fixed, it could be sorted, but hey, it would sort of crash the finance sector slightly for um, a little while. So we can't possibly have that fight, that, that happening, How, can, can we? We've just got to sort of, you know, screw tens of millions of people for high rents, high mortgages, and so on. And, you know, who's going to address that? Um, it ain't happened so far. And, you know, you know, it, historically, you know, generations of people go into sort of debt slavery and so on and um, I don't see that we've broken that um, cycle yet my kids their grandkids whatever they're screwed unless we um, you know do something a hell of a lot more radical and there is no fundamental problem with resources for places to build they might be with providing food but George von Bill reckons we can sort that out by sort of brewing up um Mike Corkins okay I've had too much air time move right. on always uh heavyweight think is the Occupy movement there Dave I think the Governor Bank of England after meeting with those guys said that uh Occupy was right we did need to change the system well I can go over the last two uh uh Maren Maren Wolfenstein yeah, sorry, found my the mic, had to find the mic. Yeah, that, that was a good session. Yeah, very interesting, very inspiring. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, uh, good luck, everyone. And have a good night. Oh. Uh, Magda? Cambridge, was it? Oh, I just posted my thanks in the chat. <laughs> but thanks. Uh, thanks again, Chan. Thanks for persevering through your cold as well. It's very interesting. I hope it's just a cold. Hey. Love and healing. Uh, Tim. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, best of luck with everything you're involved in, Sean, with the Green Party and everything. And yeah, these reports and everything, it is, it's all helping to, to move things in the right direction, which is what it's all about. So um, yeah, thanks. Good, good one, Phoenix. Oh, cool. Orlando. Hi, yeah, thank you for that. Um, really interesting, really inspiring. There's so many like great community projects out there and setting one up from like the ground up from like working with councils and stuff to do that really feels like a an important thing to be doing. Yeah. All right. Um uh, Cyril. Hey, nice to see you, Cyril. Lovely. Can we hear you? Unmute. Oh. Cyril. I can't hear you, Cyril. All right, come in if you can. Uh, over to, I think, last one's up. Phil. In, no, can't hear us. No, okay. Lovely to see you, Cyril. Bless. Um, uh, Philip in Sunny Carmarthen. 
Thank you very much, Phoenix. Yes, uh, Junior, can't wait to see you down in Carmarthen. That will be fab. We're just desperately waiting for the solicitors. That's all we're waiting for. Everything. We signed our side a month ago and we're all ready to go. And for some bizarre reason, we don't know what is holding everything up, but that would be great. And uh, the same goes to anybody. If you fancy coming to West Wales, it would be really lovely to see you. Uh, Sean, hope you don't get the COVID and I hope you get better soon. And thanks very much to everybody. Beautiful. We, we've been helping the Carmarthen Group from Space Generators Charity and the CC Network. And uh, as we tell all groups, it does take time to get these leases and property takes time, but it will get there and you're nearly there. And we're coming for tea and Welsh cake when you open. Uh, it'd be lovely to see anyone who can make it to Carmarthen when they open. Keep going, folks, wherever you are. Uh, we need these community spaces. Recycle them, reuse them, repurpose, reclaim them for the people. They are motherships for hundreds of other projects. It's good for the community, good for the environment, good for the spirit. Let's get these spaces open. Over to Sean for uh, last, last words and parting comments. Thank you so much for coming. Maximum respect for the work you do. I have to unmute a second. Unmute, Sean. Oh, sorry. Um, thank you. This was just perfect, really. It's actually cheered me up a lot um, to talk to all of you and see the work that you're doing. Um, you know, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm just trying to to shed light on this and, and create some space for for you and I know that all the work actually is you doing the work it's you know it's not really me um but I, I just think there are there are ways to to make and crystallize these good ideas um in the minds of even the most sort of unwilling politicians to see that it is common sense and I think we're we're, we're genuinely getting there things have moved on a lot since since I first met you Phoenix and and we, we'll get there I think we will reuse those spaces all right thanks very much everyone for coming have a great rest of your evening and see you next wednesday for the fantastic another legend of the green scene uh shane collins very old mate uh is coming to talk about strategies movements and him like myself has seen things over 30 years so how do we evolve these strategies tactics and uh, things of all of our movements for change thank you very much have a great thank night you are. I'll thank you bye thanks pete thanks sean thanks, thanks everybody, everybody. Take care.